circuit. So if, if you were to look at a resistor, if you were to open up your cell phone or your computer, you would see these tiny little tubes and these tiny little tubes with some bands on them correspond to a resistor, a device, a component we put in a circuit to manage the flow of charge, to manage the current. Now, instead of drawing that little tube every time we wanna talk about resistors, we will use this symbol here. Okay, so this symbol represents a resistor. Oh, and I should mention that the units of resistance is called an ohm. So one ohm is equivalent to one well, here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to back up so you know how I'm doing this. Since resistance is defined as potential difference over current, the units of resistance is equal to the amp, I'm sorry, the volts per amp. So one ohm is a volt per amp, and amp is the unit of current and one amp is one coulomb per second. So we measure the resistance of resistors in ohms. Now, in order to use resistors in circuits, we should know a few properties of these resistors. First property, let's take resistors in series. Let's say we have a certain number of resistors all wired in series. I'll label this first resistor, resistor one, the second one, resistor two, and we go up to N resistors. Well, resistors inhibit the flow of charge. When you add resistors to a circuit, you're actually adding resistance. You're increasing the inhibition to the flow of charge. You're further restricting the flow of charge. So we could take these N resistors and replace them with a single equivalent resistor. This equivalent resistor has a resistance that is equal to the sum of the individual resistances of the resistors in your circuit. So this equivalent resistor, we could use to replace two or more resistors in our circuit. So this is an important property for you to remember, that the equivalent resistance of resistors in series sum, they add together. Now let's talk about resistors in parallel. So resistors in parallel, if we had two or more resistors in parallel, so let me just depict that. Now we'll be able to prove this result later. But for now, let's say we have N resistors wired in parallel. We could replace those N resistors with a single equivalent resistor. The thing about resistors in parallel is the equivalent resistance is equal to, well, here we go again, it is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of each of the resistors that are in parallel. So another way of just writing this, if you prefer, we could just write the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance of the, the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of each of the res resistances of the individual resistors. Just make sure you invert that at the end if you want to know the actual resistance. So what that means is we could say that the 
reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is again equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. So what this means is we can now create circuits with various combinations of resistors in series and resistors in parallel. And, and notice something here. This looks a lot like capacitors, right? Yet there's a big distinction. Here, what you see here, we see that we have resistors in parallel. And notice for resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistors. So let me write this for parallel. Well, this looks very similar to capacitors, but for capacitors in series. For capacitors in series, remember, it is e the equivalent, the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitor. Its capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the capacitances of the individual capacitors. So, so those two formulas are similar in their form but one applies for parallel and one applies for series. Now I say this because if you could remember what the equivalent, let's say capacitance is for a series combination, you know that formula for the resistors is the same, it's just for a parallel combination. And then here, this what we had here was for resistors in series. And this looks a lot like capacitors in parallel. Excuse me. So again, the formula is similar, but they apply to different kind of wirings. They're like mirrors of each other. The wiring of capacitors in series, the formula looks like resistors in parallel in form. And capacitors in parallel, the formula looks like resistors in series. Now that we know that, we could start working with more complicated circuits. But before we do that, um, we're going to do a couple of basic examples. Do you have any questions right now? Not right now. OK. Thank you, Steve.